Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how my dad taught me how to make corned beef and cabbage the easy way. Um, those of you who don't know, corned beef and cabbage, traditional St. Patrick's Day Fair here in the United States. So first we're going to start with two corned beefs. Um, this is about seven pounds altogether. We're going to use some Yukon Gold potatoes. This is a five pound bag, but we won't use all of them and a head of cabbage. Um, this is a medium head nice and firm. So the first thing we're going to do is wash our hands. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to cut open the corned beef and you want to do this over the sink because there is blood in the bag. Um, just so you guys are not familiar, um, first of all this is a requested video. Um, in case you guys are not familiar, this is um, a salt brined um, piece of beef brisket. Um, there's point cut and then there's flat cut which are the base, two basic cuts you can get around St. Patrick's Day. Probably other times in the year, but most places you only see them around St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I'm going to show you that you can rinse them if you want to, or you don't have to. I do prefer to rinse them, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you don't. Um, there'll be a little bit of like a sinewy sort of foam on the um, top of the water when you're done, but Honestly, it doesn't really make a difference either way. These two happen to fit perfectly in the bottom of the pot when they're laid like that. And inside the um, corned beef, they come with a seasoning packet, which is optional. Some people do like to season their own. Some people just like to boil it plain, just get that salty taste. But traditionally, use the seasoned packet. I believe it's mustard seeds, peppercorn, and some cloves are in there. I feel like there's something else, but it's a secret. I don't know. <laughs> So I'm just going to sprinkle them right on top of the meat, and I'm going to do this as a one-pot cooking deal. Um, I'm going to take some portion-sized uh, uh, Yukon potatoes. Now, normally we used to use white potatoes, and I have to tell you, white potatoes take a little longer to cook than these. But, you know, I know that Jim likes these, and they already have that buttery goodness deliciousness, and they were on sale, so that's what we got. And normally you would put enough potatoes to cover your meat, but... Since I can't have them, um, I only made a few um, so that you can have them for leftovers and such. And then I'm going to take my cabbage and I'm going to cut it in quarters. Um, no, you're not supposed to cut cabbage like that, like it's lettuce. You have to make sure you keep a piece of the core intact on each um, on each slice or else it'll fall apart when you steam it. Hash, hashtag slash boil it. <laughs> not hashtag. Slash. Um, so I found this easier to do with my serrated knife, much easier to do with my serrated knife, which is my bread knife. And what I did was I took my chef's knife and I scored four points on the bottom. And now you're just going to lay cut sides down, um, on, around your potatoes. Normally, like I said, there's a whole layer of potatoes, but, um, you don't, it's not necessary. I want to show you it's not necessary. If you can't have potatoes at all, you don't need to have potatoes. But what we're going to do is we're going to cover the, fill it with cold water just to cover the potatoes. Um, the cabbage is going to mostly steam. It will do a little bit of boiling, but it's mostly going to steam, so it doesn't have to be covered with water. Um, it just helps it retain a little firmness and a little bit. Obviously, it's always better for you when you don't cook the vitamins out of vegetables. <laughs> and then you're just going to set the stove on high. you hear that? That means... I don't have water distributed even. This is important that I teach you. Oh, let me get the big fork out. It means there's not water underneath the corned beef. You hear when I picked up the corned beef? It stopped. My corned beef must have fit so good in the bottom of the pot that it created like a vacuum. Since you don't want the corned beef to actually like fry down there. Okay. I'm also going to do now is I'm going to add some more water. Well, actually, let's get those just. Well, if I stick those two potatoes back. Yeah, if I stick those two potatoes back, it's going to push the. Let's 
sure. Then that happens. Make up the whole house. Now we're starting to really boil. Okay, as you can see. So I'm gonna cut it down to simmer on my stove. You can check it if you want to, but you don't have to. See, it's boiling good. Okay. Cut it down to simmer and it's gonna go for an hour and a half. Um, how I tell them is check your potatoes. Oop, that's bright. Ooh, that's bright. Ooh, that's bright. <laughs> um, check your potatoes. And when your potatoes are fork in, fork out, that's usually when I know my corned beef is done. That's it. I thought I would come check, even though it's not been that long. Just to show you guys. Okay. It's been... been an hour and a half and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the potatoes and cabbage out sorry let me show you how it's rude I'm gonna take the potatoes and the cabbage and then I think I'm gonna check the meat let's see how the meat's doing This cabbage is, cabbage gets real sweet and it takes on uh, that salty, briny um, corned beef flavor. I'm just going to check the meat for firmness, doneness. Jim's asleep anyway. Should be getting up soon. But since he doesn't have to work, he's sleeping in. So I'm not quite ready for it anyway. But eh, should have got two bowls. Okay. Yeah, it feels like it's got to cook some more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave. It did stick, you son of a gun. Wow. It's sticking. I moved it. I moved it so it wouldn't stick. stuck spots there and there. But I'm going to leave this. I'm going to pop it back up. Let it go for a little while longer. But my veggies are definitely done. So now it's been two hours and we're going to release the Kraken. <laughs> Sorry, I watch too much TV. Um, it still is um, firm. You don't want it to fall apart, fall apart, because then it's going to be a wiatch to cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it rest on the counter here a little bit. So if you get the more expensive cut, um, it'll be more brisket, like square shaped, so it'll be nice slices or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this go. Boy, I sure wish there was something we could do with this beautiful juice, but there isn't. So I'm just going to let it cool off on the stove, let this rest for about 20 minutes, and then I'll slice it up. 
Have some food. Okay, so I cut the first piece and you can see the grain, which direction the grain's going. So I'm gonna turn it so I cut against the grain. That makes it nice tender. So now, I can't see, it should be. There we go. So you can see now it's, you got all the grain ends and stuff. No, honey, I'm good. Thank you. So because Jim and I are the only ones to eat this in the house, it is much easier to cook both briskets at the same time. Um, and reserved one in the freezer already cooked. And that's what I've done. Um, I've sliced both up and I've tasted um, cuts from both of the briskets to see which one... Um, was cooked more than the other and then the one that was cooked late least amount basically the one that could have tenderized a little bit more I put those slices in the freezer for another day which I can reheat um, and when I reheat them they'll tender up a little bit more so um, I we always cut them in um, thick pretty not pretty thick slices I say like a half inch um, to you know a quarter inch to a half inch slices which is a pretty nice slice to have if I was putting these on sandwiches, I would try to cut it much thinner, which is very easy to do with the bread knife. Um, but since we're serving them like um, slabs, like slices of meat to go with potatoes and cabbage, we go ahead and cut them a little thicker. And now I mentioned the soda bread. I just wanted to show you guys who have never heard of it or don't know what it is, is this is what it is. Um, I was a little taken back by this one because it sort of looks like it's whole wheat. The color is usually a lot whiter. Um, like I said, I'm going to teach you guys how to make um, homemade soda bread. This is me checking out the recipe. <laughs> be like, does it say whole wheat? Um, it also has sugar on the top, which I've never seen before. But um, this is what it looks like with raisins in it. And it's like I said, like a sweet, quick, quick bread. So... Um, I just wanted to be able to share with you how we slice it and then serve it with some Kerrygold butter. And that is it, everybody. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. It's super, super, super easy um, corned beef cabbage boil. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody you know may be interested in learning how to make this. Um, and then save this one to your um, St. Patrick's Day playlist so that you can make it next year. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't yet. And join the family. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever we upload a new video. And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.